Welcome to the Graph Courses Data Visualization course. Data visualization is one of the most important tools you will have in your data analyst toolbox because it's important for both exploring patterns in your data as well as presenting your findings to others. In this course, we'll be focusing on learning how to use the ggplot2 package in R to create high quality visualizations. So let's dive in. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to do this list of things. I'm not going to step through them right now because they might not make that much sense until we've done the lesson. But you can pause here to read them if you'd like, but I will return to them at the end of the lesson to check off each item and make sure that we've learned these skills. The packages we need for this lesson are Tidyverse and here. Tidyverse loads in ggplot, so we don't need to load it in separately. And the here package helps us more easily reference and load in data and files. So if you run this code, these packages will be loaded into R. This RMD is available and the data is available too from the graph courses. So if you'd like to follow along, please download and code along with me in this video. So what are we going to visualize in this lesson? We're going to be looking at measles patterns in Niger. Measles is a highly contagious respiratory virus that's spread in close contact. It mostly affects children and can be deadly if not treated. First of all, let's look at the geography and ecology of Niger to get a better understanding of how measles might be spread out. Niger is the largest country in West Africa by area. It contains seven regions and one capital district, the city of Niani, which is the largest city. This is followed by Zinder in the southeast and Maradi in the central south. In fact, 95% of Niger's population is concentrated in the south. The most sparsely populated and largest is the Agadez region in the north. This has important implications for measles transmission. So now let's look at the data set that we'll be using for visualizations in this lesson. It is a data set of weekly reported cases from the different regions in Niger. It was collected by the Ministry of Health of Niger from January 1st, 1995 to December 31st, 2005, spanning 11 years. To get started, we'll load in this data frame into our R environment. If you run this code, you should see a data frame called Niger M appear in your environment. Let's now take a moment to look through the data. Now we print the Niger M data frame. You can see that there are four variables or columns and 4,576 rows. The four variables are as follows. The year variable shows us the calendar year in which the data was recorded which ranges from 1995 to 2005. The week variable ranges from 1 to 52 for the 52 weeks of the year. The third variable, region, shows us the region in which the cases were reported. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, our fourth variable is cases, which tells us the number of measles cases reported that week from a certain district in a certain year. Several studies have analyzed this data set to look for annual patterns in measles cases. While these studies had done much more complex analyses than the simple data explorations we're going to do today, let's see if we can get hints about some of these patterns that agree with the findings of these papers. One way to get an idea of patterns in the data is to get summary statistics using the summary function. For this, we just type in Summary Niger M. When you run this code, this gives us the maximum, minimum, and quartiles for our numerical variables, and for our categorical variable region, it gives us the total number of rows for each region. However, this summary omits a large amount of information contained in the data set. It just gives us a little snapshot. In fact, summary statistics can be highly misleading. And the best way to get a sense of patterns in our data is to visualize it. We can do this in R using the beautiful package ggplot2. So let's learn a little bit more about how ggplot2 works. The gg in ggplot2 is short for the grammar of graphics. 
But what is this grammar and how does it translate to R? The grammar of graphics is a theoretical framework that was first described by Leland Wilkinson in his book, The Grammar of Graphics. The creators of ggplot2 based their code on this framework. Now think about how we construct and form sentences in written and spoken languages by using different components, such as nouns, verbs, and adjectives. We can't just use them in any arbitrary order. There are rules for how to structure them. For example, I can say I am joy, but I can't say joy I am. That is linguistically incorrect. Similarly to linguistic grammar, the grammar of graphics defines a set of rules for building graphics, and it divides them into separate components called layers. These are the seven grammar of graphics layers, and let's look at them a little more deeply. The grammar of graphics, or GG, layers have specific names that you'll see throughout the course. Data, aesthetics, geometries, facets, statistics, coordinates, and themes. We take these different layers and combine them in order to build a plot, and we go in order from the bottom up. The three layers that are absolutely required to make a plot are these three components, data, aesthetics, and geometries. Data is simply the data set that we want to plot from. Aesthetics are things we can see that visually represent the information in the data that we provided. The aesthetics that we will most commonly use in our plots are the x and y variables. Geometries are the shapes used to make the plot. For example, points, lines, or boxes. Points make a scatter plot, lines make a line graph, and boxes make a box plot. Don't worry if all of these terms don't make sense quite yet. It is a challenge to keep up with the ggplot syntax, but once you get practice writing this code in R, you'll become fluent in no time. Speaking of writing code, let's get to it. We're going to work through the three essential layers one at a time. Our first plot is going to be a scatter plot using data from the Nijar Metasoles dataset. For easier plotting in this lesson, we won't use the whole Niger M data frame, but we'll subset it to a smaller data frame containing only the data from 1996. So let's create the Niger M96 data frame. If you run this code, it will filter the data to only 1996 and remove the year column. The functions filter and select are from the dplyr package, which is another core package of the tidyverse used for data manipulation. These topics are covered in our data wrangling course, which you can check out on our website, thegraphcourses.org. Let's take a quick look at Niger M96. If you print this, you'll see that the year column is no longer present since we're only having one year, 96, and we've gone from over 4,500 rows to just 416. Now that our data set is ready, we can plot our ggplot in increments. We're gonna add elements one at a time so that you know what each layer is doing. We can do this in three steps. Before getting to the first step, we're just going to initialize the plot. We do this by calling the ggplot function by simply typing in ggplot and adding the brackets after. Note that there's no two after the ggplot function. ggplot2 is the name of the package, not the function. Now, if you run this code, you'll see that it simply results in a blank canvas. But not to worry, we haven't added any of our three essential elements yet, so let's get to the first of our three steps, which is to add the data. We supply the data frame to ggplot using the data argument. The way you do this is by typing in data equals the data frame name that we want to use into the ggplot function. So data equals, and the name of our data frame is Niger M96. Let's run this code, and you'll see that again we get a blank. That's because we haven't given it the aesthetics or the geometries, the shapes to plot. Now we define our variables in step two, which is to add the aesthetics layer. We can look at disease incidence over time by plotting cases against weak, as we mentioned before. In ggplot speak, we are mapping cases to the y-axis and mapping the weak variable to the x-axis. So let's add the aesthetics layer and tell ggplot which variables to plot on which axis. So this is the code we used last time and I'll just add on to that. 
So comma and start a new line to add the next argument. On this next line, we type in mapping equals AES. Open the AES function. X equals weak and Y equals cases. So now we have two out of our three required layers. If you run this, it may look like a blank plot, but it's not. You'll see that the axes are titled with weak and cases, and they are also scaled. So you can see that cases ranges from zero to almost 2,000, and week ranges from one to about 52 for the 52 weeks of the year. Now we add the geometry layer to specify what kind of plot we want to create. Enter a new line and type in geom point. You don't need to add any arguments inside geom point right now. And now we have all the three essential layers. So if we run this code, we should get a plot. And we do. Points have been added with the geom layer and now we have a complete scatter plot. So you'll see that there are eight points for each of the 52 weeks, representing eight different regions. Right now we can't tell which point is from which region, but we will add colors later on so that we can distinguish between them. So now it's time for you to practice plotting in R. For practice questions in this lesson, you won't be using Niger M96 anymore, but we'll create a new subset called Niger M94, which only contains data from 2004. For this practice question, we want you to use Niger M04 and create the same scatter plot that we just created with Niger M96. You want to plot cases on the y-axis and weak on the x-axis. Plotting with a different data frame will also allow you to look at those patterns and see if the same seasonal transmission holds true for 2004 as it did for 1996. So since this is the first lesson in this course, and if you haven't taken the TGC courses yet, I'll explain how our grading system works. If you've already taken these courses and you know how to use the auto graders, you can skip to the next section. So for practice questions, in the first code chunk, you will write the code that needed to answer the question. Here I will just write ggplot and run it and see what plot I get. Even though this isn't the correct answer, let's just say it is. And I will try seeing what happens when I try to check the answer. First, to submit the answer, what you're going to do is delete this part that says your answer here. Copy the code that you use to create your plot. Paste it in place of your answer here and run this code. You should make sure that this object, Niger M04 scatter, appears in your environment tab after you submit it. Then what you can do is check your answer by running the check function. Each practice question will have a different check function. You don't need to put any inputs in there. Just run the code and it will tell you, now it says wrong, please try again because I purposefully entered the wrong answer. If you're stuck on how to answer the question, each practice question also has a hint function, which also requires no input. You can run the hint function and it will give you some text to help you answer the question. Finally, if you're still stuck on the question, you can write in the solution function, which is just dot solution underscore followed by the object name for that practice question. And I'm not gonna run that because it'll give us the solution to that practice question, but if you need to, you can run that and it'll show you the right answer. Now you can pause here and in the RMD, do the practice question, submit it and check it. Good luck with the practice question, and I'll see you in a bit. Welcome back. I hope the practice question went well. Your answer should look something like this. We'll see actually that even from 2004, you see the same pattern that between weeks 10 and 20, 
is when the highest peaks are. This is following the rainy season in Niger. What we've done so far is to just use the most basic arguments for our data aesthetics and geometries layer. But we can also modify things in each layer, even in just these three layers. Generally speaking, the Grammar of Graphics framework allows you to customize quite easily. We can tinker with our existing code to change the data aesthetics and geometries layer. In fact, you've already done this in the practice question by changing the data layer, where instead of using NigerM96, use NigerM04 to create the same kind of plot. We can also modify the aesthetics and geometries layer, and that's what we'll be doing in the next couple of changes. So first of all, we're going to change the aesthetic mappings. So let's look at our original code first. This is our original scatter plot. Now I will copy this code, and I want to modify it. So paste the same code into a new code chunk. Let's try changing the aesthetic mapping here. Let's replace week in the x-axis aesthetic to region. Week is a continuous variable and region is a categorical variable. So instead of a scatter plot, we will get what is called a strip plot. You'll see that instead of the continuous scale for week that we have before, we have eight distinct categories, one for each region. Next, we're going to change the geom function. Modifying the geometry layer will give us a different kind of plot since we're using different kinds of shapes. Here are some common geom functions in ggplot, and they correspond to different kinds of plots. What we've used so far is geom point to create a scatter plot. So now we'll make an incremental change again. We'll use the original code for our, our scatter plot here, and we're going to change geom point to geom call, which will give us a bar plot. Call here is short for column, which is another name for bar charts. So run this code, and you'll see we didn't change the aesthetic mappings, we just changed the geometry layer, and now we have weak against cases, but a bar plot. It's important to note that we can't just change any geom function for another. In this case, we changed geom point to geom call, which worked because they both accept two continuous variables. Something like geom histogram would give us an error. Run this code as an example, and you will see that here it says stat bin can only have an x and y aesthetic. This is because histograms show the distribution of just one numerical variable. Now that we gave AES two numerical variables, ggplot doesn't know how to map that, and so it gives you an error. Now it's time for you to practice changing geom functions. You're going to be using the Niger M04 data frame again to create a bar plot of weekly cases using the geom call function. You're going to map cases on the y-axis and a week on the x-axis. Again, you will submit your answer and check it in the same way as before. Now we're going to look at aesthetic mappings that we can put inside AES in addition to x and y position. We can also change other aesthetics of the plot, such as the shape of the points, the size of the points could be equal to a certain variable, we can also change color, line width, and line type. These apply to line graphs only. So let's return to our original scatterplot code where we added the aesthetics X and Y, and we can add now other aesthetics like color and fill. If you want to look at which other aesthetic mappings you can add to a geometric function, such as geom point, you can put in question mark geom point into your console and it will open up the help tab and then you can scroll down to aesthetics and see the different aesthetic mappings which that geometric function can accept. So now we'll add color to the points of our scatter plot. We're going to color it by region. So we are mapping the region variable onto the color aesthetic just like we mapped week and cases to x and y. So this means we're going to add a new aesthetic inside mapping equals AES.
So here you will see that inside AES where we had X and Y, I added color. Now if I run this code, it will produce this colored scatter plot. Here you can see that the points are colored differently according to which region that they're in. This gives us information about an additional third variable in addition to weak end cases. So this time in that scatter plot, each point was colored by which region that data point was from. You can also see that ggplot created a color legend automatically. Now with the additional information on that plot, we can make a few observations. For example, we see classic bell-shaped curves for each region. The regions Zinder, Maradi, and Neyame were affected the most. Notice that these three regions are the most population dense. They were the biggest cities located in the southern side. Now these new insights help us understand a little more about those epidemic patterns. But the scatter plot is still a bit crowded and it's not the easiest way to understand the epidemic patterns. We might be able to try different plot types that can make this clearer. So now let's make a modification to the geometries layer of this code and change geom point to geom call to give us a bar plot and see if the patterns are clearer this way. Now this gives us a stacked bar plot. It shows us the relative contribution of each region to the number of cases in a particular week. We have 52 bars for the 52 weeks of the year and the size of each segment represents a particular region, which is again coded by color because we added the color equals region aesthetic in mapping. An important thing to note is that the color aesthetic only applies to the border around a shape. It doesn't color the inside of the bars, as you may have noticed. This didn't apply to our scatter plot before because the points are solid, they don't have a border and an inside, but these bars do. Let's now change the inside of the bars instead. For this, we'll use a new aesthetic called fill. So here we just make a small change to the code and change color to fill and we still want fill equal to region. When you run this code, you will get another stacked bar plot, except this time the inside of the bars is colored. Here again, you can see that the largest segments belong to the same regions that we saw had a high number of cases in the scatter plot. The pink, blue, and green bars from Zinder, Niame, and Maradi are still shown to contribute the most cases. Now you can practice applying the color aesthetic to a new type of plot, line graphs. You can see that we want to create a line graph using the geom line geometric function. We haven't used this before, but you can apply the same principles of modifying the geometry layer changing the geom function to geom line, and this will produce a line graph. These are actually considered the best way to represent time series data for an epidemic. It will be more clear than the scatter plot. So you can pause now and work on this in your RMD. Hi again. So now you should have completed that practice question showing a line graph of measles cases in Niger from 2004. Just to double check, your line graph should look something like this one. Here you'll see a line graph with eight separate lines, each one colored a different color according to the region of Niger that it's from. Note that the highest epidemics belong to regions that were not the same as they were in 96. So we see that even though there are still these seasonal patterns from year to year, there's differences in which region might have the biggest epidemics. So far, we've been matching color or fill in the case of bar charts to the region variable so that the data from each region is mapped with a different color. Those are known as aesthetic mappings, but we can also look at fixed aesthetics which are a different kind of aesthetic modification to make to a plot. It is very important to understand the difference between aesthetic mappings and fixed aesthetics and how and when to use them. Some of the most common aesthetics we'll use in ggplot2 are color, fill, size, and alpha. Now these all could be either aesthetic mappings, as we've mapped color and fill so far, or they could be fixed aesthetics. For example, 
we already did color as an aesthetic mapping and called color equal to region and then the data variable region was mapped to color. So aesthetic mappings use data. But aesthetics that are fixed are equated to a constant value like color equals blue. Then the geometric objects or the shapes, whether they be points, lines, aren't going to change depending on the data, they'll just all be blue. This all depends on whether you put it inside the mapping equals AES argument in ggplot2. So far, as you've practiced and seen the examples, they have all gone inside mapping equals AES. The best way to understand the difference between fixed aesthetics and aesthetic mappings is with some examples. So let's get started and use color as a fixed aesthetic in our original scatter plot to make all the points blue. So here's the code that we used to create our original scatter plot, which looks like this. Here there are no color mappings. And remember the fixed aesthetic goes inside geom point. So over here, I'm going to enter color equals blue. Now, if I run this code, you will notice that the color of the points have changed. They are all now uniformly this blue color. So not only is every point the same color, this uniform color has nothing to do with the data. We can make it any color we like and it doesn't represent additional information about variables. As I said, the color should go inside quotation marks and there are a variety of colors you can use. If you want to know what they are, you can run just the colors function in your console to see what the choices are. Let's take a look at them for a second. Now, when I run this, it prints out a whole list of different colors that are valid in R. So you can pick any random one that you want and put them in your points. Let's try out one. Um, let's see. Aquamarine sounds good. Let's do Aquamarine 3. So I would just go here, back to the code and change blue. And then when I run it, we have this nice aquamarine color applied to all of the points. You can feel free to experiment with any of those R colors and you'll get to practice them in the next practice question. Now we've used color as both an aesthetic mapping, where we're mapped it to the region variable, and we used it as a fixed aesthetic. Let's explore a new aesthetic called size. The size aesthetic does exactly what you might think it does. It controls the size of the geometric object. We can change the size of points, but let's visit the line graph to see how line width can be controlled by using size. So first, I'm going to run it without any fixed aesthetics to just see what the size looks like by default. So this is quite similar to the last practice question you did, but using data from 96 instead of 2004. And the lines are pretty thin. The default here being used is 0.5 millimeters. So let's double the size of that and set it to one millimeters. Size as a fixed aesthetic will go inside geom line. So I will type in size equals one. So now that we've run this code, you can see that the lines are a little bit thicker than they were before, which makes it easier to see the differences in color and just gives us a bolder plot. So now it's your turn to use the fill aesthetic as a fixed aesthetic. You used it before as an aesthetic mapping for a bar plot, but now you're going to fix it to a constant value. So you'll use the same data and x and y variables as before using the Niger M04 data frame and mapping cases against weak. And the R color that you want to use as your fixed aesthetic for filling the color of the bars is hot pink. So feel free to pause the video here and please work on the practice question before you return and you can use the check and hint functions as usual. I hope you had fun making your hot pink bar graph, which should look something like this. We see that the region variable is no longer mapped. We don't have a color key showing us which color responds to which region. It's a fixed aesthetic and all the bars are uniformly colored hot pink. So in this lesson, we've kept it simple and only covered the three basic layers, data, aesthetics, and geometries. What about the other layers? We will see them more frequently as you go along in this course. Let's take a quick sneak preview of what that might look like using the Niger M data. 
very soon you'll be able to write ggplot code that looks like this. So here we have data equals Niger m, and you'll notice some mappings that you recognize, like x, y, and color, fixed aesthetics, size, which we've done, but alpha we haven't covered yet, but it just makes the lines a little more transparent, and geom lines, so we're going to make line graphs for all of those years. The facet layer, you might remember as a GG layer, it creates subplots. We'll make subplots for each year. The scale layer here controls the color palette. Themes controls all the non-data ink of the plot, so it just makes it a little more attractive. And then last but not least, here are the labels. So we're adding a title, subtitle, changing the axis labels, adding a caption, and changing the name of the legend. This might seem complicated, but it'll just take you a couple of lessons to get here. Let's see what the plot looks like. And here is the resulting plot. We have 11 different subplots, one for each year. Eight different lines, one for each region. The default colors are no longer being used, the rainbow color palette. We chose a different color palette, so you'll notice that, and the color key is there. The Axis labels have been made more descriptive, and we have a title, subtitle, caption linking to the data source. Now you might say, this looks pretty complicated, I've just done a few basic plots, but because ggplot offers such a consistent scheme and a framework, it's actually not that hard to get to this level. So don't be intimidated, take a couple more of these classes, and you'll soon be able to make presentation-worthy plots like this one. So let's revisit the learning outcomes and see if we've met them all. First of all, you can understand the ggplot framework and how it relates to the grammar of graphics. You can name and explain what the three essential layers are. You can write code to build a complete plot using those three layers. You're able to create scatter plots, line graphs, and bar graphs. And you can add and modify different aesthetics like color, fill, and size. In the next lesson, we'll be looking more into detail on scatter plots. That's all for this lesson, and hope to see you in the next one. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you're taking this course for credit, don't forget to go to the Graph Courses website and complete the quiz related to these lessons. For more resources, visit our website, where you can track your progress, access interactive quizzes, and lesson notes and connect with our teachers and other learners like you. And if you'd like a more guided experience, we also offer live online boot camps with expert help. So join us at thegraphcourses.org to start your learning journey today.